Hey there, YouTube. Steve here. So, um, today I'm going to make a video different than I ever have. Um, don't know. Um, making this video kind of just to let people. If you're watching this video, either you have sarcoidosis or you know somebody who, who, who has. Um, otherwise, you don't know what it is and you really don't care and you're not going to Google it or search it or whatever. Um, so yeah, I'm not making this video for people to feel sorry for me or anything like that. Um, making the video maybe if somebody gets um, recently diagnosed and they're searching they'll find this and um, maybe see my journey what's happened with me maybe it'll help them maybe it won't I don't know um, everybody's different so just because I'm this way you might be better or worse um, yeah so here it goes probably gonna be a long video um, 48 years old um, named Steve from Michigan Genesee County near Flint <laughs> don't have Flint water though um, Sorry, I, my thinking, I pause a, a, a lot. Um, anyways, I'm near Flint. Forty-eight years old. Um, disabled now because of my mainly my ner my ner my neural start. Um, used to be a union electrician worked in different states all over the country worked at home climbed did stuff I mean I had an active life um, used to fly fish a fair amount hunting but out, out of state in state um, hiking um, rode motorcycles my wife and I tried to see lighthouses all around the state of Michigan on our Harley I mean a a act active lifestyle I'd come home from work and th three four years ago I would come home from work and I would do more in a couple hours after work than I do in two or three days now um, today's Feb Feb February 1st I might have been out of the house four or five times since Christmas. I don't know. I'm rambling. But anyways, yeah, I'm 48 years old. I got diagnosed in August of 16. So, um, from my mid-20s, um, I would have these different little ailments and aches and pains doctors never knew what was going on you know they'd give me a diagnosis and put me on something usually some type of steroid and it would go away then a few years later something else would be bugging me um i've had numerous cancer scares in my life never had cancer but um some doctor somewhere was pretty um adamant um, my heart at one time they thought something was on my heart and I went in for f one picture showed something and another one didn't um, my brain supposedly I had something on my brain once and they went in with something through my groin and I was half in and half out and I remember this doctor just freaking out saying um, 
I'm the wrong patient. It's impossible. And whatever it was was gone. It was gone. Um, went to McLaren a few years ago. Had pain, stomach problems. Um, doctor there told me I had some sort of a mass on something internally. I can't remember what the heck it was. You know what? If I did, I'd be dead now. And I'm not. Um, so, yeah, I've had numerous things like that happen. And nothing's ever come from it other than discomfort. Um, I've went more than a year without a s solid bowel movement. Um, to the point, I went, yeah, I've done that numerous times in my life. Um, trying to stay on um, track here. So, yeah. I noticed, um, I got diagnosed in August of 16, um, leading up to that, I'm at work and I can feel, you know, starting in my, um, thirties, late thirties, pushing 40, you know, I noticed, man, I hurt a lot. But you know what? Everybody my age hurts, so I really didn't think too much about it. And, you know, maybe I was hooking up some equipment or something, and I'm um, laying down, and I'd have to have a friend help me up because, I mean, it was just, it took me a minute to get up, you know, and just laugh it off, you know, really didn't think too much about it. And um, it progressively started getting worse. I mean, I'm, I was an industrial electrician, um, a lot of climbing, ladders, scaffolds, stairs, and in the months prior to my diagnosis, I noticed I couldn't even keep up with guys that were 10 years older than me. Guys that were approaching a t retirement, I could not keep up with them, no matter how hard I tried. And the apprentices I had couldn't even come close to him and that started to be a concern so I started kind of trying to all right well I need to work out I need to do something and um yeah what well, anyways so in August of 16 um my wife and I were going to um Montana with our fly fishing group and we're driving out there. We we used to like to drive and just see everything, you know. We'd much rather do that than, than fly. And uh, now I can hardly ride in a vehicle. Um, but anyways, we, we get out there and we stop somewhere in the middle of the night. My wife was driving. I get out of the, um, the Jeep to go into this motel to see if they had any rooms somewhere along the way in the middle of nowhere, middle of the night. And um, I can barely walk, man. I look like I'm intoxicated. And I'm baffled, man. I don't know what the heck's going on, but my mind wasn't really communicating with my legs, and I just could not understand. It was weird. Um, and um, this progressively got a little worse. We've got... Ended up stopping in Wyoming at a friend's house and visited him for a little bit. And I was pretty sure I was having a heart attack. So my wife and them, we were going to get it. They, 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 they took me to an emergency. And um, um, when I'm in the emergency room there, I pretty much had a doctor tell me that I had lymphoma. Um, meant nothing to me. I had no idea what lymphoma was. Really didn't care. I wanted to go catch some trout. We were going out to fish the Madison. Extremely pumped about that. And all I, just give me my antibiotics, whatever the heck I need. This guy's telling me that I need to go home, then I'm a very sick man. Hmm. I don't know. I don't feel sick. You know? 
feet are swollen up, legs are swollen up. Other than that, everything's fine. Had a little hard time breathing. Well, long story short, I got out to my, my, Montana to go fishing. And um, people I was with pretty much felt I shouldn't have been there. It was kind of the take I got on it, that I wasn't um, doing well. And I probably wasn't, but I'm still here today. I didn't die. So that's a whole different subject. But anyways, we get out there. I'd really never even got my rod in the water. I think we stayed one or two nights. And I was pretty content just hanging out. You know, it was nice just to be there. You got the river. You got the mountains. Um, at that point, I didn't know what the heck lymphoma was or how to even spell it to Google it. And I didn't know it was a form of cancer until my wife spent so much time on her phone that got me a little alarmed and then by that point well heck if I do have cancer I'd much rather stay here and get to fly fish this spot that I've always wanted to fish and never had the opportunity so I really didn't want to go home but on the other hand I didn't really feel I guess welcome would be the word I kind of felt like I, don't know, I was very uncomfortable in the situation not knowing what was going on with me and the way everybody was looking at me. I just didn't. So we packed up and got out of Dodge, I guess you'd say. Um, come home. I got to go see a, I can't remember what they're called, lung doctor. Pulmonologist? I don't know. It don't matter. I had to go see a, um, um, lung doctor and she does like 50 some biopsies on my throat and my lungs turns out I'm covered in these lymph nodes nodules something I don't know and she did 50 some biopsies on me um, coughed up blood for a little while after that and it turns out that I, I'm um, now I'm off work for a little bit. I'm laying in bed and I get a call from the doctor, not um, a secretary. The doctor herself calls me up and she's pretty excited. Hey, Steve, got great news. You don't have cancer. You got this stuff called, and I, would, I don't even pronounce it right. My wife makes fun of me. Sarcoidosis. And it's no big deal. You're going to take some steroids for a month or two, and it'll be gone, and your life will be normal again. Wow, that's pretty sweet, man. I'm pretty excited about that. So I get these steroids and start taking them, and I'm convinced I'm going to be back to work. Everything's going to be normal. Doctor said so. So she's smart, she's got a degree, she knows. And I'm getting worse. Everybody's worried about my lungs and I'm having a hard time controlling my legs, my, th my thoughts and so I end up seeing neuro neurologist, neuro neurologist and they got everything on their mind except sarcoidosis. And I'm, I'm telling these guys, I've had these problems for years. In my late 20s, I went through probably six months where um, a very hard time thinking. Um, driving was near impossible. Um, at times, it was like I was looking through a... Um, shower glass like everything was pixelated um and this lasted for maybe six months and all of a sudden it was gone and then i went about 17 years where and the doctor at that time diagnosed me he told me i was having tias he said it was something to do with my heart and my my um heartbeats or something i don't know the rhythm 
and then something was causing these minor little TIAs that was and um, he gave me some medication to take he was wrong man and I, 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 I got I got I got to the point where um, um, I didn't even trust doctors I've had s wasted so much money and time on nothing I mean, these doctors, they're just throwing darts at the board and trying to, yeah, you know, it got to the beat. I, I, I had to darn near be dying to go to the, a doctor or a hospital because so many misdiagnoses in my life and wasted time and money. Yeah, didn't, that, oh God, I can't remember where I'm at. So yeah, she tells me about the SAR cry, and I just gotta take these steroids. I'm more concerned with my legs. They start looking neurologically, blah, blah, blah. Well, I had to have a spinal tap for whatever reason, and during the spinal tap, um, they found a lesion in the videos, or maybe not my something, maybe some x-rays, something, they found a lesion in my spine. Well, come to find out that I got a lesion of sarcroy that's on my spine. And I guess there's fluid that runs through your spine that go to your brain. I, I don't understand it. I really don't. For years, since my 20s, um, if I get very stressed, mad, or even very happy, I have a pain in my lower back that's ex like crippling it's it, it's it's crazy um good things like um like watching my grandkids at christmas or I'm trying to think of really good things but really good things have made it hurt stress has made it hurt and um anger if I get really, really mad, it'll hurt. And that's happened for years, and I've never really, honestly, I thought it was just normal because it's been there. Um, well, when I saw the, um, not video, the pictures, it's in the same spot where I get that pain, which, I don't know. But anyways, I got this lesion there, and that's causing that. Um, I have a um, hard time with my legs. Today, I can barely walk. I mean, it's very frustrating trying to walk and, and um, do things. So, yeah, they did that, and then... Um, I ended up Genesis. I've seen every doctor around here, man. Um, 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 Ann Arbor, the U of M place, um, Henry Ford. Nobody in Michigan could could help me. Um, even had one doctor tell me I didn't have Sarcroy. Um, every couple others wanted to look other, but my wife insisted that I go down to um, Cleveland Clinic. I really wasn't very happy about going down to um, Cleveland Clinic, but I did, and I went down there, and I see this guy named Dr. Paramble. Probably the most caring, compassionate doctor, maybe even people I've met in my life. Um, wonderful man. Um, when I hit, when I went down there, I thought I was heading for a wheelchair and maybe going crazy, and probably going to be in a home. 
I mean, I really, I felt, I felt that was my future. And honestly, I still wonder if that's my future sometimes. Um, Well, he went down there. So it turns out I've got this crap in my lungs, my lymph nodes, my bones, my muscle, um, probably other places. I've asked for a PET scan, but one, I guess it's relatively hard to get insurance to pay for it. And two, um, two doctors have told me that it wouldn't change the treatment. So why do it? You know, you find out you got this sarcoid somewhere else that it may be inactive. My treatment's not going to change. So why find out where it's at? That's the stand a couple of doctors have taken. And I kind of agree with them. So I'm not really too worried about finding out where it's at. I've been on numerous drugs. Um, the pregnizone, I hated that. Um, it made me diabetic for about a year. It's 2018 right now. I was diagnosed in August of 16. I haven't worked since January of 17 um, I'm on disability whoa um, every day is different man you could come to my house and I'm walking around with the weed whacker the day before the day after I may not be able to move um Yeah, so, but now I'm doing this stuff called Remicade. I get it every four weeks. I go to Cle Cle Cleveland Clinic, and they, um, it's an infusion, which is, I guess, a fancy name for an IV. I sit there for a few hours, get this IV in me, and then my wife takes me home. So she takes a day off every four weeks just to drive me down there and bring me back. Um, got some medications that I take. So, those, that's, I, um, they tried IVIG. And I guess it's really worked with a lot of people. It didn't work with me. I ended up in the hospital afterwards. Um, had black urine and men, 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 meningitis. Um, But I guess it was attacking my red blood cells and, and killing them, which, if I'm understanding correctly, is what made the black urine. So, you know. And if you or somebody you know or love has got diagnosed, that doesn't mean all this is going to happen. A lot of people, I mean, I had 17 years where... I would have days I was just a little off and I got through life. I didn't know what was wrong with me and I didn't want to spend any more money on doctors. And I worked with heights at work. And had a active physical lifestyle and everything was fine. Now I use a cane most of the time. I do have a walker that I use not very often, but um, well, I should be using it today. I can barely walk today. Um, have a hard time thinking quite often, so I don't drive a whole lot. Um, my eyes are very sensitive to light. Um, 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 sunglasses during the day and driving at night is, um, you know, the oncoming lights just 
I mean, they 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 bug me. Um, there's times even the t the the TV, my phone, as all things. I just they, they hurt my eyes to look at. Today my eyes are very very sensitive to light. Um, what else? I have a hard time walking. My legs. My it's weird. I can't say I don't feel them because I do, but my feeling is not right. Um. Yesterday I was sitting on the couch and I didn't want to move my leg because I thought the dog was laying on my feet. Well, finally I got tired of sitting still because I wanted to move, but I didn't want to make the dog move. So I looked down. I can feel his weight. He ain't even there. He ain't even there. So I got a lot of, I get these pains it feels like there's a sword just went right through my foot um my leg my arms um almost constantly there's a muscle somewhere that's doing this uh it's not stopping it's just like right now my arm i can feel it moving you know um very sensitive to the touch uh, my wife don't even touch me anymore because not, not always, but most of the time. Um, it's either uncomfortable and often it's painful just to have her kind of rub my rub my arm like that. You know, just barely rub it. It hurts. I mean, I, I, I don't want it. I don't want to be touched. Um, I absolutely hate shaking hands with people. Um, there's times I've somebody's introduced me to their husband and I shake his hand three hours later my hand still hurts you know um, my wrist hurt I used to fly fish and just just doing this with my wrist trying to swing trying to the movement you know with the weight of the rod on there it's so much discomfort on my hand that it takes the the en enjoyment out and then to to roll the drift boat same thing man so I got I got two high dollar rafts that are just sitting out there that I wonder why in the hell I even bought man because my wrist hurt too much to to roll them what else you know thinking slow joint pain um my blood sugars come back around now but now i got high blood pressure so it's always something man um even 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 sex has been affected you know um walking um, everything, my whole life, everything that I do in my wife, my wife has been affected, you know, um, and the thing, um, you look at me, I look normal, you know, you, 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 you don't think there's anything, um, wrong. Because I look normal. But um, inside, I'm not, man. I, I, somehow my body's, I guess, attacking itself for um, whatever reason. So with, like, you know, you get a diagnosis like cancer or, or something like that. Um, everybody's there for that person. You know, they're getting cards, people are bringing over food, people are doing everything they can to help that person and to help that person's significant other. And you don't get that with this disease, you know. You get, oh, I've been thinking about you, they asked about you, but meanwhile you got grass at your house that you're struggling to take care of 
I mean, just taking a shower, and I'm not making this up, just sometimes it takes me a half an hour just to get out of bed in the morning. There's been mornings that I need my wife to help me get my fingers and my hands and my arm moving, you know? And then other mornings, I pop right up. Um, I've fallen down our basement stairs, so I'm fearful to go down and do laundry. So my laundry goes weeks sometimes. Um, so obviously I'm not doing the wife's laundry. So now she's working. She's coming home. She's taking care of all my crap. Cooking. Holy crap, man. I can't tell you how many times I've almost started a, a fire. Um, just trying to think that it's, yeah, driving. I thought I was in Swartz Creek one day and I was in Flushing. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. So, you know, and in friends, there was a time I thought I had a lot of friends and I don't feel that way anymore. I feel like I got some great friends. Some new, some some old. But most of the people that I used to hang out with, I don't even hear from them anymore. Um, got one, well, two, I guess, friends that I fish with. Other than that, no. No. I'm a burden. You know, if my wife can't go and babysit me, then nobody wants to go with me. And that used to hurt. Now I don't care. Life's short, man. You you learn who your friends are. Um, we used to do a lot of hiking and um, I mean, in the mountains we'd hike. I look at our pictures of the things my wife and I used to do and one part of me gets sad because I can't do those things anymore. And then another part of me is glad that we did, you know. So I don't know, you know. Now now we do things in our Jeep. It's not the same. It really isn't, you know, getting out there and driving around in the woods in your Jeep. It's not the same as walking through the woods and experiencing it. So, don't know where this Jeep thing's going. I don't know. I'm sick of working on her Jeep, my Jeep. I'm sick of it. I the the what used to take me. You know, eight, ten hours to do on a vehicle, maybe five hours. Takes me months. You know, I just can't physically and mentally do those things that I used to. And, yeah. So, I don't know. Don't know. Sometimes I wish that my diagnosis would have been cancer. Um, then you know. You know? All right, well, either I'm going to beat this or I'm going to die, one or the other. You know? I uh, was getting IVIG, and I'm sitting in a chair, and the lady next to me is getting her last chemo treatment, and... Boy, she's all excited, and everybody in the room's excited for her. And she's asking me what I got, and I tell her, "Oh, really? What's your treatment for that?" So I tell her, "Oh, every four weeks for how long? Forever." What do you mean forever? Yeah, forever. You gotta do this every four weeks. Yep. Yeah. She's like, wow. She's like, 
At least I had something to look forward to, a date that I'd be done. <laughs> so I just put my headphones on and nice talking to you. <laughs> you know, I mean, peep, peep, peep. So if you get this disease, it's going to change you. That's all there is I can say. It's going to change you. I'm a different person than I was. I look back at that person. I don't even like that person that I used to be. That being said, I don't enjoy the person I am today. Um, like I said, I've been out of the house less than a half dozen times since Christmas. It's February. Um, most of my friends I don't hear from. I do have some that, that text me, you know, on a fairly every other day or two and that's nice honestly I got some friends that text me more than I text them I don't like to bother people you know people got lives people you know yeah but I can't I can't maintain the things around my house and keep them from falling apart and a social life I know it sounds it's gonna sound stupid, but I can't. Um, I think the hardest thing that I do is getting dressed and showering without falling. Cooking's pretty hard. Um, bought a zero turn to cut the grass, so that helps tremendously. But I still run into stuff, man. Oh God, yeah. Um. I can't tell you how many costly mistakes I have made because I just don't think, man. And people say, slow down and think. That don't change anything, dude. I just don't think. I don't think. I, I can't explain it, but I don't think like I used to think. So this video is getting long. So don't know. That's pretty much my story and how it's affected me. So, I hope and pray if, you know, I think when I die, I'm going to give my body to like some type of sarcoid um, research because, you know, there, there needs to be some awareness. People need to understand this is a thing, you know. You get it, you got it, man. It might go in a, oh hell, I can't even think what, a remission of sorts, and you will be um, non-active, but you still got it, you know? Um, I don't know. So yeah, I people need some type of awareness of this drug. They think you're a, a baby. They think that you're faking. They think you just want attention. You know. Meanwhile, you're sitting at home alone for not even days, man. We're talking weeks at a time, you know. And just doing nothing. Sometimes laying in bed crying because you're in pain. You know, praying to God to just, you know, just take me. But there's also good days, you know. And I've learned that one day might be absolutely miserable and you can't move and you're crying and you just want the day over. The next day you might be walking around the yard with a weed whacker or playing with your grandkids. You know. Makes it hard to plan things. You know, I don't buy concert tickets anymore. The last two or three concert tickets we bought didn't go. You know. Bought tickets to go see the Oak Ridge Boys. You know. I think we had a hundred and some dollars a piece in those. Didn't go. 
So a couple hundred dollars wasted for nothing just because I had a bad day. You know, vacations suck. We don't go on vacation with friends anymore because, one, they don't ask us. Probably because I'm so unpredictable, they don't want to be around me. And two, I don't want to ruin anybody's day, man. You know? So, very self-conscious. Like, one day I might be working, walking with a cane. The next day I might not be able to. I mean, it's, and then the next day, I might, you might not think there's anything wrong with me, you know, I might talk fine, I might, everything, and then the next day, I might just sit there and stare at the dashboard like I'm mentally ill, and I, I can't tell you why, I wish I knew, so, all right, man, so, Hopefully this gives somebody somewhere. Maybe you can relate to it. Maybe you can't. I don't know. I don't even know why I made this stupid video. Alright. See ya.